Welcome back to Yellow Card Vanguard. Toku here with another video for the Vanguard Cram School. The topic of today is something that is so subconsciously intuitive to everyone but is often overlooked during gameplay and even deck building, and that is respecting the wing con. Respecting the wing con is a concept that not only applies to your deck's wing con, but also being mindful of your opponent's wing con as well. On today's agenda for today's lesson on wing con, uh, wing cons consist of knowing your wing con and building a deck towards it knowing your opponent's win cons and adjusting play according to it, and knowing if you're in tempo with your win con. The core of your deck's own win con comes through the decisions you make when building your deck, as well as the plays that you make during a game that leads you towards the win con, and thus, at the same time, the misplays you make that push you away from the win con. I like to use Masai as an example here, a deck fortunate enough to have two win con strides in Neo Harmonics and Integral Messiah. One being the large glory in field buff, the other being the ridiculous hand shred. With respect to deck building, now that you know your win cons, you obviously want to choose cards that play towards it. But, a lot of the time, these card choices are chosen because they are, as I'll call, good stuffs, and luckily overlap with your goal towards the win con. And as such, deck building towards your win con is a concept that often goes overlooked. Following on the example of Messiahs, the most common cards you see are Arrestor and Lady Fencer. And for what reason? Commonly, people will often think, Oh, Arrestor is good because he's a free lock, the Defensor is good because she can hit for 16k solo and she feels your soul, but they often overlook the fact that these two cards both lock themselves, which is essential to hitting that 5 unlock requirement to get Neo Harmonics glory skill. Or they can talk about the inclusion and exclusion of Dunamis Messiah, which nets you an extra attack after the integral hand shred where each card in their hand becomes more precious for them to guard with. So when we make a deck, it's important that we look at cards and judge them not only on the value that they bring, but also whether or not they bring us closer to our win con. For example, the ward is a good deck because it has cards that generate so much advantage, but at the same time there are also cards that are strictly dedicated to their win condition. This concept applies to all decks, but will become more obvious in decks that have an obvious kill turn. Examples being the Wiseman Loop, in which old cards such as Witch Grappa and Witch Valencia became more valuable for enabling it. Captain Alex, featuring coming. any self restander alongside Ortia, where Ortia's negative 5k drawback became negligible because of Alexandro's big pumps. And though outdated, I'll even mention the Bladewing Demagogue OTK, where Demagogue himself became important to the deck and brought Bladewings to a frightening popularity. Because deck building is mostly fortunate enough to have good stuff cards that also have effects toward the Wincon, the aspect of respecting the Wincon in deck building is often confounded by just good stuff cards. However, the surprising lack of this respect is most seen in gameplay decision making. This time I'll use my main deck, Tavas, as an example. If I recognize my deck's Wincon is to have my One Storm Tavas, Tidal Assault, Adelaide, boosted by Ortia, attack their vanguard 3 times at like 30 to 40k, mentally, I will hold a higher value to these pieces, and I would be more reluctant to call them down before my final turn, and risk losing my only copy of them at the moment to various reasons. And yeah, yeah, Ortia does have resist, but we've got new mechanics such as Chaos's new Overlock, Overlord Circle Burn, Gazelle's Twin Strike, I can still lose her. This is a concept I think should be adopted more in the competitive mindset, where you value your cards that lead to your win con a lot more than other cards. For example, I wouldn't mind throwing down Cipras after one another, but I'd rather hold my title Assault in hand for when I can see that I can go for a kill. The kinds of plays that I do see happening along this branch of line is a player will overextend, call a field down, do some damage, take some damage, and when they've met the condition to go into a kill turn, let's say for a different example, uh, Yashabayasha and Yasui Tenma loop. But they've aggressively called their Yashabayashas down, they're all dead now, the Tombas got sniped early, and now they've lost all access to the loop pieces. Very small things like that, but you'll often catch yourself thinking, oh, if only I didn't call this card last turn, I could have had it in hand right now and gone for the win, which is a common mistake of not respecting your deck's win con. At the same time, though I'm preaching about respecting your deck's win con, also recognize that decks in this game have evolved to have multiple win cons now for multiple situations. So make sure to keep your mind open and not to tunnel vision on one line of play as to miss other obvious lines of plays, such as forcing yourself to go into favorite champ Victor, where winning champ or Victor Plasma could be just as effective or more effective for less resources. Or forgetting that Tavas has access to their own big glory swing and wailing Tavas if the deck you're against seems to have infinite perfect guards like Shadow Paladin. To quickly summarize respecting your own win con, I'll say build your deck and select cards and ratios that help enable your win con, and in game, make line of plays and value your cards that help enable your win con, but also recognize that your win con changes towards the situation and you need to be flexible enough to change how you value cards according to the situation. At the same time as respecting your own win con in play, one must also respect their opponent's win 
con. And this just comes from playing more and more. You can play against multiple decks multiple times to learn their win cons. You can play multiple decks multiple times so that you can learn their value cards as well. For example, the giant red target that every nurse of Broken Heart has on her forehead the moment she enters the rearguard circle. A small summary of the decisions that can be made are things like should I guard now because I won't be able to guard later against things like leaders or other G decks that have first strike kill turns? And even simpler, I know his deck runs glory, so I'll value my G guards more and hold on to them for when he does make Drag Shider or Gills at Ice. I've seen someone mindlessly call down Belial's and sack them for Ezra's skill against a deck with the glory skill. They got frustrated when they died to the glory because their hand was dead basically with four Ezra's. Those Belial's would have had more value. Some thoughts that should be running through your head when you see your opponent flip over their starter is what is his win con? What Rear guards enable his win con, how can I prevent him from reaching his win con, stuff like that. As long as you're mindful of these things, you'll probably see a comfortable improvement in your win con's consistency and gameplay. So, to finally summarize everything I've said today, us card fighters should respect a deck's win con, be it your own or your opponent's. Respect your own deck's win con by understanding what it is, what enables it, how to value it, what to value. Show yourself in your playtesting and decision making that you do understand your win con. Respect your opponent's win con by understanding what theirs is, what enables it. For example, if they place down a piece on the board that's important to the combo like they throw down a title early go after it go after it like a fat kid going after cake just things like that if you enjoy this sort of content and wish to see more do hit that like and subscribe button also don't forget to press that bell button for me leave down in the comments below what you think about wing cons how you prepare for them and what yours is this has been toku with yellow card vanguard toku out